that hurt? You okay? No, I mean, it doesn't it feel good. Hey, where did it hit you? In the knee. Oh, man. The, the disc shattered. shattered. It looks like it just broke apart, which made me pretty happy because if I did it, then I totally deserve it. But yeah, it's just something that I think we're going to have to work out in the design in the next one, but I take one for the team. We were getting some levitation, but it was a bit unbalanced. So I think that corner came down and when the disc hit the ground, spinning at a high speed, that's what caused it to break and then fly apart. So that's what remains of Kayla. Poor Kayla. <laughs> so. A revision to stop this from happening in the future, which we probably should have thought of in the first place, is basically almost like uh, training wheels. Basically like landing feet like on a, a drone. So it's impossible for these wheels to touch the ground. RUD, rapidly unplanned disassembly. So the other, other thing is this probably wouldn't have happened if this one was also full density. So the next ones we make all need to be 100% fill density on the 3D printer. So originally, some of the discs were actually printed at about 25% fill density, which means they're mostly empty on the inside, especially around the hub, which is arguably the most important part of the disc. So once it got spinning up really fast because we were running at 36 volts, the disc literally just tore itself apart, bounced off his knee, hit a camera, and went everywhere. Oh, it hit, it hit the, the camera? camera? The piece of the disc skipped across and went right for the guy. <laughs> And I also hope he's okay. Are you, are you good? You all good? Okay. But it was it was generating some good force. How did it feel until it decided to nearly kill everyone? It didn't feel good. So <laughs> like vibration? It was pretty. It was oh, pretty quick. Oh, that part. Like before it exploded. But at, at the 24 volt test, like it felt like it was almost ready to take off from our hands. Yeah, it was a lot less stable. A little bit harder to hold. When it when we cranked it up. Yeah, so it kind of caught me off guard a little bit more, like compared to the first test we did. Well, it's. 48 yeah. volts now? 36. 36. All right, so we ran into a few issues. We were able to get a bit of levitation out of the hoverboard, but there's a few things we need to do before we test this again. So, this is our hoverboard. It's heavy. Yeah. So, we jumped from four motors, we said, we don't have time to test again on four motors, so screw it, we're gonna go to six. From my kind of observation when I was holding it, something was going on, but I don't think it was enough to get it lifted, and we had the capabilities of moving up to six, and we didn't have the time to really play around with it, so we just were going all in and putting it all on the table today. Each one of these motors produces a ton of torque, and the way you can calculate torque, kind of, is the longer the tube, the more magnets that are in there, the more coils that are in there, and they create more torque. So there's a lot of torque and power in these motors. This is what we started out with. <laughs> yeah. Its max RPM is 50,000 RPMs, but it has no torque. Good at spooling up and doing its thing, but after that, you're not gonna have anything left in torque. So we said, okay, we need more torque, but and a little bit lower RPM. We don't need that much. So we came up with these. These are only rated for 24 volts, but we weren't getting enough speed at 24 volts, so we 50% uh, increased on them. So they're at 36 volts, which is not suggested by the manufacturer. So if they blow, we'll hear nice noises. So 36 volts works, but What'd you do? It gets pretty warm. So it all depends how long we want to run it for. And Let's run it for about <laughs> five seconds and then hopefully nothing blows oh, up. I was running it for like a minute straight. So. Oh, okay. We have three two cell batteries all put together in a series configuration, which basically takes the output of voltage and uh, adds those all together. So they're all 11.1 volts. So we had 22, which roughly calculates up to 24 and then we jump that third one, which gives us 36 volts. They're all in parallel, so if one motor decides to go, all the other motors will keep spinning. Let's just do it, I don't care, like, just put as much voltage as we need to get it, uh, the speed up there. If we don't exceed the nominal voltage, we're not gonna get the, uh, the speed we want. 
We were originally working with four discs, but after kind of giving it that initial test, we realized that there's no way we're gonna be able to get the right amount of push. It's not gonna be able to lift it up. We kind of got that feeling. You can tell if you're holding the board, but if you're watching it, you never know that there's an actual hover going on there. So after that first test, we had to start working on getting another set of discs on there. So looking back, I'm realizing some of those ideas were pretty unpractical, such as the trucks being clamped on with a little knob there. Essentially, we just had a normal set of skateboard trucks that so would mount on with another metal plate that secured it to the board. So then we, we got another of those steel beams, put it right in the middle because it's gonna be distributing the weight more evenly. All of these are set up in what's called a counter torque configuration. So these all spin um, one way. These will all spin the exact opposite, which will equal each other out so we won't see this thing just trying to spin around in a circle. I learned about kind of the process of what a 3D print is capable of going through. So how we treated the discs when we were putting them together, as well as the amount of infill we had on it. So when we put it on there, it just wasn't ready to take that instant 36 volts of electricity spinning it all at once. And from what I saw, is as they were lowering it down, there was maybe just a micro crack and it just kept cracking and cracking and cracking until it just flew apart. From what we saw there, we stepped it up from a 10% infill to a 100% infill, which is basically means the entire thing is one solid piece of plastic. So if something does crack, it's gonna take a lot more force to actually crack all the way out. So we upgraded to this disc, which is essentially the same idea, except we increase the infill and we don't have to mess that up, warp it, do all that, and we still have just one solid piece and less points to fail. We definitely didn't quite take everything that we should have into consideration. One of the biggest things being safety. And like a few of the things we were saying before is that we're gonna have six motors, we're gonna have the shield around the hoverboard that we've decided to not go with and instead just put it around the testing area instead because that will you know, take weight off, take just any sort of thing that can interfere with it just because it's so volatile as it is. <laughs> These are our standoffs. These allow the motors to sit right above where about a half an inch off the ground. So it's from the floor to the disc. Uh, I was playing around with a few more ideas, just trying to get it safer. So we installed a Wi-Fi board. That way we're able to turn it on using an app on our phone. As we know, we tried testing it uh, manually with on and off switch and it didn't go uh, that well. So this time pretty much we have um, a phone application with a button and pretty much a string. So when you click that button once, it turns it on and you click it again and it just turns it off. This is the central hub. This is where everything happens. Uh, we have our main switch. So this is off and we have on. So if I flip this on, battery is armed. Uh, you connect to the Huzzah, which is uh, over Wi-Fi through its reserved IP address, which basically means it just says, hey, I've reserved this IP on this router. Give it to me every time I connect. It sounds simple, but then when you start putting it all together, it gets a lot more complicated. My leg is fine. It got it healed up pretty quick. There was a couple days of limping. The second day, it kind of swelled up like a baseball, but good to go now. It's been a hell of a ride. It's been a lot more challenging, I think, than the Ironman one. This one, I actually thought, like, wow, we've really overstepped into a different land of science and uh, just the amount of math we had to do in those last two weeks when I was here is completely different. It was a good team and having them here was awesome. Well, I gotta say, after three days, I think we've accomplished a lot. It looks like a hoverboard now, whereas when I got here, it was just a motor and a disc pretty much. I think it's pretty awesome what we've accomplished so far. There's definitely a few lessons learned from today, especially with our little incident here, but the team knows what they need to do in order to make this actually work. So I'm pretty excited to see what's gonna happen. They've kind of inspired me. I'm thinking once this project's done, I'm gonna take it to the next level on my channel. So make sure you subscribe for that. All right, go down. Go down. Our complete last ditch effort is to take this to 48 volts. No, you want to go boom? Go boom. If you really want to kill this thing, I'll take it to 48 and blow it. Is everybody ready? Three, Three two, two, one. If you like what you see, what we're doing here, and you want to see more cool videos, make sure you like and subscribe. Click that little bell to get the notifications for when we have a new video, and we'll see you next time.